Colonel Rob Manis has a lifelong record of providing dedicated service to this nation. Having worked his way up from the enlisted ranks to full colonel, he served our country for more than 32 years. He has served as a bomber squadron commander, bomb disposal technician, Joint Chiefs of Staff Operations Officer, assisted the National Security Team with the campaign plan for the global war on terrorism. He authored the first theater nuclear war plan and served as the Vice Commander of America's largest airborne intelligence wing. Colonel Rob Manus is a true American hero. This is Rob Manus Live. Counting staff shortages, as the chief said right there, the Austin Police Department is now redirecting what they're referring to as non-emergencies, like burglaries, no longer in progress, to 311 starting today. Here with the reaction is Austin City Council Member Mackenzie Kelly. Mackenzie, good morning to you. Good morning. I would imagine, you know what, if I lived in uh, Austin, Texas, if I was a taxpayer there, I think I'd be a little freaked out. You know, I, I don't have the list. Am I allowed to call 911 because somebody just uh, burglarized my house? Actually, we've got the list. If it's theft, if it's burglary, you got somebody suspicious outside your house or in your car or vandalism, don't call the cops. Call 911 and they're going to send a civilian. Absolutely. And it's, you know, part of the disastrous consequences that the city council made in 2020 to defund the police department. A lot of what we're seeing happening starting today is coming home to roost from that decision. Well, and it's disastrous. They cut so much. I can't believe it. they cut a third of the budget in uh, August 2020. They cut one hundred and fifty million dollars. What else did they think was going to happen? Uh, you know, I don't know, but I will tell you that one of the biggest concerns I have is that prostitution is on that list. We have victims of human trafficking happening and they're going to send a social worker and not a police officer. That's absurd to me. Defunding the police has dire consequences. Welcome back to Training Tuesday here on the Rob Manish Show live on Patriot.tv and our x Spaces simulcast. Well, police officers and firefighters, as you just heard there, put their lives on the line every single day, and yet many departments are facing massive budget cuts as well as equipment and supply shortages. Uh, after defund the police became the rallying cry of protest in the summer of 2020, officers and firefighters in small and large cities alike have gone from heroes to budget bait. Thanks to these budget cuts, communities must make hard choices about what equipment they can afford to provide their first responders. And fire and police departments across the country are reaching out to nonprofits like Back to Badge USA to help them meet their equipment needs. The budget cuts, personnel reductions, station closures, and equipment shortages greatly diminish the capacity of our first responders to respond to life-threatening emergencies, especially. Well, businessman Darren Parent created Back to Badge USA to support our first responders by highlighting the importance of the work they perform for the benefit of our society. And second, to support the first responder community by providing scholarships and education to those dependents wishing to serve as first responders and by donating paramedic grade medical and trauma bags to police and fire departments that lack such equipment. Businessman and founder of Back to Badge, Darren Parent is my guest today. Darren, welcome back to the Rob Manus Show. It's been a long time. It's good to see you, Colonel. <clears throat> really good to see you. Hey, Darren, uh, before we jump into the organization itself, uh, tell folks about your background. Uh, I sell shipping containers, and um, yeah, that's an interesting thing in of itself. But uh, yeah, somebody needs a container, I get it to them. So uh, my father owned a security guard company in Ventura County, California, beginning in the early 70s. And uh, he passed away, God rest his soul, and uh, gave me and the other kids a very high regard for our police, fire, etc. when he raised us. Him and my mom were from Oklahoma. And um, yeah, California was a different world back then, but we see what's going on. And uh, a gentleman that was a friend of my dad's worked with me. We got back to Badge USA going. Then Dennis retired to the state of Washington, and we're doing this now. We started out in Summerton, Arizona, a small town, 20 miles from the nearest hospital ER, which is Yuma, and 15 miles from the U.S.-Mexico border. 
So we started out with their 15 vehicles, went to Wisconsin, did it for uh, several departments in uh, Minnesota and Wisconsin. Uh, we did that in La Crosse, and uh, that was 40 bags. And then our most recent donation was 97 medical bags to every single police cruiser in Wilson County, Texas, about 45 minutes outside of Austin there. So this is a rural area and uh, the equipment is uh, yeah, what they need. Yeah, so, so your reach is, uh, is really nationwide. Uh, and I think we've got a map that shows that, uh, that we can bring up. Uh, uh, you know, uh, so uh, is your goal uh, to uh, go beyond these states uh, uh, that we see here? I'm assuming with the stars in them is where all of the activities that you just named off have been. Uh, uh, but uh, do you have uh, long range mission objectives to hit the other states when you get enough money raised? Well, if you look at the blue stars, Summerton is a blue star. La Crosse is a blue star. And right there, that's uh, Wilson County. It's a red that should be blue. We're going to update that. But all the other red stars are places where people have asked us, when they found out about Summerton, they asked us, they said, hey, look, can you come to our area? Can you come to our area? South Carolina there, the Greenville area. And uh, you're in Mississippi. You know where their little town Elvis was born. That's Tupelo area. They've asked us. And there's a lot more on there from emails we've received and it's like, hey guys, when we get, we don't say this, when we get the budget, we'll be everywhere. And we're just making a list of various communities that have reached out to us, departments that have reached out to us. About half of the vehicles in the United States, police vehicles do not have any kind of medical equipment. The other 50% go from, you wouldn't believe it, like a little $12 Rite Aid plastic, yeah, med kit, all the way up to Simi Valley, which has AED defibrillators. And they have a bag like our bag here. And they have all kinds of goodies, but Simi Valley is is very, very blessed. You know, they're, they're very pro-law enforcement there. So wherever we can get the equipment to, wherever there is a need, we started out in Summerton because the need was there. They are so far from an ER. And Wilson County, same thing. Yeah, in Summerton, uh, uh, I think Congressman Derek Van Orden, former Navy SEAL, helped you guys out there. Is that right? Is Am I remembering that, that correctly? That, that was Wisconsin. Derek Van Orden came in as a surprise keynote speaker. And uh, we're non-political, non-partisan, but the fact is a Navy SEAL to give that keynote speech was great, but he happened to be running for Congress at the time. So we just kept that on the QT. He came in, gave a great speech. I mean, everybody loved this speech. And then you can see it on our website, badusa.com, uh, where Derek Van Orton is handing out these bags to the various uh, police and fire representatives that showed up there. And he had a great time. Everybody enjoyed that event. Uh, but really, this bag that I just showed you right here is not the bag we use anymore. We upgraded the bag, made a little bit bigger bag, and the trauma kit, the tearaway trauma kit, is now on the back. It stays on there with hook and loop, and there's trauma components inside the main bag as well. So if you have a situation like officer down or a Columbine or something like that, and you have somebody else you can hand, a tra hand that trauma kit to, they can take care of others while you're taking care of these, and you're stabilizing people until the ambulance gets there. That's what you're doing. and. These are life-saving components. Absolutely. Uh, and as you mentioned, I live in Mississippi. I was just in Tupelo last Thursday night, as a matter of fact. Uh, uh, so uh, once we get that together, make sure you give me a call, and uh, I'll be happy to come up and help if you need me to. Uh, Most uh, certainly. The, uh, It'd be great to have you as a keynote. Absolutely. Absolutely. It'd be my pleasure. Uh, the... Uh, your website mentions scholarships. The last time you were on the show, we didn't really talk about that much. Uh, uh, what are you guys doing on that line of operation? Well, we have uh, scholarship applicants that have put in for a scholarship, and we kind of track them. We know where they're at. Some are going to go through the graduation process with the academy, and at that point, they're not eligible by the time we do another event. Okay. But when we do our next event, we would like to have a future firefighter, paramedic, or future law enforcement officer 
give a scholarship to them as the committee selects the one or two and give them like a scholarship ranging anywhere from 800 to 1200, usually around $1,000, because these are people who are dedicating their lives. Um, and I don't want to sound cliche here, but they're dedicating their lives basically to put their life on the line every day, usually for people they don't even know. And that is, in my opinion, that's that's a heroic thing. Uh, that puts them, in my opinion, in the category of uh, people like Curtis LeMay and Audie Murphy. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's also why people like uh, uh, Mr. Van Orden, myself, I mean, that have had uh, experience in the military, you know, SEALs get a lot of medical training. I've, I've supervised uh, large clinics, uh, almost the size of hospitals twice uh, in my Air Force career. And uh, uh, it's just, uh, we see every day when we're doing those jobs, what law enforcement and fire fire department and emergency medical technicians do uh, for the community, because it's every single day, 24 uh, seven. And to have these budgets cuts the way they are, I mean, even even the lack of uh, uh, personnel has an impact on the ability to respond to the emergency. So every little bit helps with these kits uh, to take some of the budgetary pressure off and maybe hire more people uh, by us providing uh, these kits through Back to Badge USA and other organizations like you guys do. Well, we've got a live audience now, uh, Darren. Uh, I don't think we had one last time you were on the show. So I try to take a question every 15 minute segment. So. Uh, we got a hand up over in the uh, Spaces audience. Let's go ahead and see what the question is. Uh, go ahead, Bill and Caroline are our co-hosts today of the space. Uh, who's that up with the hand? Go, go ahead, Elizabeth. Ask your question. Thank you, Bill, and good morning, Colonel. My question is because of the fact that so many cities and states are now letting the illegals be put on the police forces and everything. Are those scholarships going to go to any of them, or are they going to strictly be for the American citizen? Well, that's something, if you heard my background earlier in the show, that I have to say ain't going to happen. You have to be a legal citizen to qualify for those things. That's why I talked about politics. I don't want to, we don't want to get involved in that. We just want to do what we're going to do. All of the scholarships and things like that, there are certain qualifiers. If we can't add the simple box on there that every DMV has, are you an American citizen? No, we only only citizens will be getting that. And that's actually up to the person who's chairman of our scholarship committee to vet through all those. And she's the daughter of a fallen officer. So, yeah. Yeah, that's a, that's a, that's a great question. Uh, so what are the qualifications, if you could list them real quick, uh, Darren, for the scholarship? Uh, I know I know your website mentions dependence of, of current first responders. Okay, well, current or fallen first responder dependents, that's the top tier when it comes to anybody receiving a scholarship. Those who are seeking to enter into being a first responder, police, fire, EM, EMS, that's the second tier. So as long as you qualify for one of those, that's basically where it's at now. And that first tier, even if you're not gonna be a first responder, but you're the dependent of a first responder, usually a fallen first responder, then whatever you're seeking to do, yeah, you qualify for a scholarship there, uh, whether it be whatever you know your career is because you're the dependent of a fallen first responder but in that second group those are the people who are wanting to make this their living wanting to make this their way of life and um, yeah that's how we do it and american citizens yes american citizens only yes absolutely it's unfortunate that we have uh, we have uh, towns and cities and counties that are wanting to hire uh, non-citizens to do our law enforcement uh, uh, it, very puzzling uh, and really adds a, a dimension to the effort to help uh, our first responders because of the budgetary cuts, uh, uh, you know, a threshold thing that we've got to watch out for. Well, when we come back, we've got to take our first break, there. And when we come back, we'll hear from the sheriff of Wilson County, which you mentioned uh, the last event you guys did, which was fantastic, I think. And I've got a couple of clips that we'll show throughout the show uh, from that event today. Uh, but uh, we'll hear from the sheriff himself about the importance 
of Back to Badge USA, folks, at badgeusa.com. You can go give a donation, and please do so we can get those red stars on that map turned into blue ones. I'll be right back with Darren Parent of Back to Badge USA right here on the Rob Mana Show on Training Tuesday at Patriot.tv. Sounds rolling, all three cameras, we're good. Andy, Is there any regrets that you have in life? I, I should sit here and say, yeah, I got a lot of, yeah, I got a lot of regrets. But when I look back on my life and I understand the lives that were lost, I mean, I'm sitting here with you. And I can tell my story. Former National Security Advisor, Lieutenant General Michael Flynn, pleaded guilty today from lying to the FBI. He was one of the most respected generals in the military. He was, by definition, the most dangerous possible person for Donald Trump to hire. Only really brilliant when military career serving 33 years. Why was he being so elusive? Mike Flynn told the truth and faced life in prison. Every American needs this historical DVD keepsake. Flynn delivered the truth, whatever the cost. Hand signed by General Michael Flynn, one of America's most treasured military heroes. Order now at the Patriot TV store. Go to Patriot TV, click on store, and grab a once-in-a-lifetime chance to own a treasured piece of American history and get your own personal download link to watch America's most talked about movie, as well as a DVD hand-signed by General Michael Flynn. Use promo code PTV at checkout to get special savings. The Patriot TV Store. Incredible savings and a secure, hassle-free shopping experience. The world is about to shift. Banks are going cashless globally with the emergence of central bank digital currency, which will bring with it programmable money and the ability to turn on or off your purchasing power based on your digital social profile. It's like the equivalent of spyware in your bank account. You need to get out of the system with the world's safest and most private assets, silver and gold. Call Kirk Elliott PhD at 877-547-5743. That's 877-KIRK-PHD. When you come to rural counties, the biggest problem you have is budget and funding, and you have to prioritize. And Back to Badge allowed us to gather equipment and tools for us that, to help the public that we, could, we didn't have to look for budgeted funds for. And it, no telling how long it would have took us to supply one to every car if we'd had to do this individually on our own. Welcome back to the Rob Maynard Show here on Training Tuesday. We're talking with the founder and uh, uh, the guy that operates Back to Badge USA, and you can find them at uh, badgeusa.com. And they're even on Twitter with a fledgling account there at Badge USA. Uh, go ahead and give them a follow and a, and a share and a like and uh, let folks know uh, that these guys are out here. And uh, Darren Parent is the founder and creator and operator of Back to Badge USA. And Darren, uh, uh, that was Sheriff Wilson, or uh, Sher the Sheriff of Wilson County, Texas. Uh, from your last event, let's talk about that event. How many bags did you give away and how much money did you have to raise in order to fund that? Uh, that, that was a few shekels, as they would say. Um, each of those bags behind him was the yellow bag, but that's the bigger one. And you see the red bag that's attached to it. That's the tearaway trauma bag that has all kinds of tourniquets and occlusive seals. And the same amount of trauma components is in the yellow bag. That's the main bag. Those are about 400 to $435 each. That's how much they cost. Uh, this overall, this donation was when you just look at the 97 medical bags Every single one of the law enforcement vehicles in Wilson County got one of those. The main bag with that tearaway trauma bag, that was about just over $40,000. So, yeah, Summerton was around five. Uh, you know, Wisconsin, Minnesota, that was about 15. But we wanted to make sure everything in Wilson County was taken care of 
and uh, they have a Texas DPS unit there that's 10 vehicles. I mean, somebody said, why not let Abbott handle that? I was like, no. It, politicians like to make excuses why not to do this stuff, okay? They, they have their, their agenda. Let's just get those to those Texas DPS vehicles as well. Every law enforcement vehicle in Wilson County now has them. Yeah, I think that's a smart move because your mission is to try to alleviate the budget pressure uh, on these uh, departments, uh, and that includes uh, the Texas DPS. Anybody in law enforcement or or fire department or EMT that needs one of these bags, uh, uh, it's your mission to try to get it to them to alleviate that budget pressure that we're seeing every day now. We see it every day in every police department. Uh, when I was researching the show, uh, uh, looking for uh, video clips to use, uh, there is not a shortage of video clips talking about either police or fire department personnel shortages, uh, equipment shortages, the, the shortages in the ability to train people uh, now because they've defunded the training academies around the country. So it's harder to get training uh, in order to get qualified. Uh, it's unbelievable. Uh, how bad it's really gotten that, and that's not even counting the videos that I came across, uh, just thousands of them talking about how police officers especially are retiring in droves. Uh, that's putting that personnel pr shortage pressure on the ability of the, those folks remaining uh, to get to an incident and provide that critical care that's needed you know, in that golden hour or golden few minutes before actual medical personnel arrive. Uh, so I think it's very important. I'm glad, I'm glad that that's your approach, you know, is to try to hit, try to get them to them all. Uh, well, let's bring the map back I, up, uh, Darren, and, and talk about the yeah. places that you need to get to and how you're prioritizing those and how much do you need to raise to get there? Well, here in Tupelo, or your, your state of Mississippi, Tupelo, We'll probably be around 20, 25. Uh, Greenville will probably be more closer to 40, what Wilson County was. Uh, right below Oklahoma there, that star, uh, there's five communities there, and they only need about 40, so that'd be like you know, 20 uh, at most. And there are so many other areas that are not on the map here. I'm not going to mention any names of the university, but there is a large university out there, and we're talking... Very well-known university up up there, should we say, with UCLA. It's not UCLA, but that's how yeah. well-known they are. Their medical school, I have right here in my desk a letter written from the sergeant of the police department from the medical campus of that university. I asked him to write the letter, and of all things, he did. <laughs> they have no equipment nothing in any of their vehicles and they're in a medical campus of a large university. Now we wouldn't take care of them. We just we just let the boosters and the alumni know about that. That would take care of itself. But my point is if they don't have it, if there are, are large sheriff's departments out there that the most they got is a belt tourniquet and they don't have a single one of these bags in their vehicles, if that is happening there in those places, it's everywhere. It's 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 just everywhere. They, they don't have the equipment and we need to get that to them. There's little towns in Wyoming, Ohio, everywhere. Yeah, and, and most of your uh, kits do go to small departments, don't they? I mean, what, what's the typical uh, department look like or town look like that, uh, that you're giving these away to? Well, like Lavernia, they got 18 bags and they're in Wilson County, which is about 30 miles uh, east of San Antonio. And uh, w once you get about 10 miles outside of San Antonio, you don't even know San Antonio is there. I mean, it is, it is nice. It's like a very nice area. But you're further away from a hospital or ER. Lavernia got 18 of them. Uh, I think Floresville got 10. These are smaller communities. Uh, Summerton, where we did our first donation, that was 15. And they're a community of about, I think, 26,000, give or take. I mean, you, yeah, so you smaller, smaller communities. Uh, that's, and like I was telling the judge over, uh, uh, Judge uh, Whitman over in uh, Wilson County, even if somebody from a larger community wanted to take care of their community 
and wanted to help us and hey can we get the equipment to their community they'd arrange for the donations and all that we wouldn't do it and there's a reason why if your community is 600,000 people okay great you got all these donors come in and, and we can get the equipment with that money but then that sends a bad signal that every one of the larger mm -hmm. cities that no we are for the smaller communities where the, the help is further away that's where the equipment is needed we go where we're needed, just like you as a military man know. You deploy your resources where the resources are needed, not where somebody would like to have them. Oh, yeah, absolutely. That's a, that's a key function of your success so far. How many, how many of these bags uh, have you given away so far in your organization? It says on our website. 160 when you look at the numbers i gave you earlier 15 to summer 10 about 40 to wisconsin uh, minnesota and uh, 97 that doesn't add up but there are smaller little donations of two and three bags here and there that we've done that we didn't want to you know just just little donations to vehicles here and there that we we found out about we took care of so they they weren't part of any donation event just little ones that we did well, that's fantastic because I, I know they're greatly appreciated by everybody uh, that does this job. Uh, and, and, and even the leadership of the organizations, as the sheriff of Wilson County uh, just said. So uh, let's go over to the audience. Uh, I think we've got a question over there, Bill and uh, Caroline. What do you have for us? Well, I don't have any hands, but I, I have a question. My question is, is, have you been able to get on any of the mainstream medias and, and um let people know about this organization, how they can help, how they can donate, or not even mainstream, but maybe off mainstream, like your um, uh, Real America Voice and things like that. Have you been able to get that out? You're, you're about you your want a straight answer. You want the straight answer? Nope. If I had the cell okay. phone number of Rush, if I if I had Rush's right? cell number, yeah, nobody. Rob Mattis here and a couple other small shows have really been it. It is difficult to pierce that armor. We've got an excellent organization. We're doing some great things. Nobody picked up on Summerton. And secondly, what happened right after the Summerton donation, Rob? COVID. For the yep. next year and a half, COVID wiped us out. We did the Wisconsin event because a doctor in the area reached out to us and we took care of that. And he had a lot of resources to do fundraising in his local area. So that was a little bit different kind of an event, but we still did that. If we can get the attention to what we're doing, if, and Rob would agree with this, uh, I think when you talked to Lectrell a couple years ago before he passed away, uh, if people knew what we were doing, they would very much support it. So no, we haven't gotten onto those shows. We love it if Bannon or somebody could give us some attention or some of those people, but they've got a lot of things to do themselves. They've got a lot of people that want on their program, but we would love it if we can get on one of those programs. That would be great. We'd probably send one of our board members, who's the daughter of a fallen officer, to be on that. And uh, yeah, it'd be great to get that kind of attention. But Rob is doing this for us. But anybody else who wants to talk with us, we're all ears. And, and Darren, uh, didn't somebody from OEN, One American News, have you on too? Yes. I, I, I apologize. Dan Ball. Dan Ball did give us about seven or eight minutes. And Dan Ball is a great guy. Sharona Bishop over at Frank's Beach, Lindell TV. We were on her three times. Her program's good. Uh, but when it comes to the Lou Dobbs and the uh, Bannon and people like that, Back or I don't want to go into a bunch of names, but when it comes to the really big shows, uh, mm -hmm. nobody so far. So you know what? That'll come. We hope that they find out about us. And just like when Dan Ball found out about us, we are on within a week. Well, my ex audience has grown to over a hundred thousand as of yesterday, thanks to those folks that are listening to you and asking you questions now. Uh, so uh, we'll definitely have it out there. Uh, it's live right now, and it's live on all of my platforms, where I have about uh, four hundred thousand followers on them. Uh, and uh, Patriot TV was started by General Mike Flynn, and our boss uh, uh, is also a show host, uh, Brandon House. We'll see about getting you a segment on uh, on one or two of his shows and the other shows on the network because. Uh, uh, it's very important. This is an important nonprofit. It's kind of a niche, uh, but it's it's a crucial 
niche that has to be filled. Uh, and Darren Parent and his friends have stepped up to do it. Uh, and as you heard, uh, you know, one of their board members is the daughter of a fallen uh, first responder. So uh, their children are even stepping up to do it. We've got to take our next break uh, and we'll be right back uh, for the next segment. We've got Darren for the whole show. So we're going to talk through this and, and, and talk about where you can give donations, uh, who you could ask uh, to give donations to this and how you can help us. I'll be right back with Back to Badge USA on Training Tuesday, the Rob Manus Show live at Patriot.tv. BellaPatriot.com. Uh, let me explain to you what this is. This is a, a, an elixir. It's a daily elixir. It is a collagen, and it also has something known as uh, astraxanthin that crosses the brain-blood barrier that's loaded with antioxidants to take on the free radicals. And then it has something called a uh, cat's claw. That is from a bark on a vine in Peru. So these are three very powerful ingredients. Now, if you go to BellaPatriot.com, there are your science and clinical trials, right? And... If you want to read the science, there it is. Uh, you don't get nearly 80 clinical trials for uh, for nothing. So again, you want to talk about science, the information behind it, this is it. We highly urge you to check it out. Uh, the results for Melissa and I have been very powerful. She and I take it each and every day. It's very simple. You just rip the top, drink it, and then throw away the container. We would urge you to go there, order it now, click and order now and get your subscription. Consumers often ask, what should I expect when I take the Bella Grace Elixir? And the answer is varied. It really depends on what your health and wellness needs are. I would consider this as your foundational core product for a whole range of health and wellness issues. Let me give you a few examples. If you're a little bit older and you have some joint health issues, some problems with mobility and discomfort, the Elixir is gonna be your best friend. If you have some skin health issues, wrinkles, hydration, aging, all of those elements are going to be benefited from the, the elixir, including age spots. Now, if you're in a younger demographic, maybe visual health is where you need some assistance. Eye fatigue, dry eyes, all of those are gonna be benefited by the elixir. It's a core product because it benefits so many. report from the state outlines the crucial need for firefighters and funding for their work. The Division of Fire Prevention and Control found 68% of fire departments don't have enough funding for necessary improvements, equipment, and gear. The state says it needs more than $40 million over the next two years to pay for it all because a lot of the equipment is very specialized and very expensive. They will share equipment. Uh, maybe not everybody will have say an self-contained breathing apparatus mask assigned to them. They may need to share it amongst them. So it does limit the number of folks that can be actually working on a scene if they have to share the equipment. Staffing is an issue as well. More than a thousand firefighters are needed across the state over the next two years. So the Colorado Fire Commission is working on recruitment and retention. Welcome back to the Rob Mana Show live on Patriot.tv and XSpace's simulcast. And we're talking with Darren Parent, the uh, founder and leader of uh, an organization called Back the Badge USA. You can find them at uh, badgeusa.com and on uh, X here at Badge USA uh, about what his organization does. It's a nonprofit that provides medical gear to first responders, police departments, fire departments, EMTs, provides scholarships to uh, dependents of fallen uh, first responders, uh, people that want to go to uh, first responder training uh, and those kind of things and, and does community outreach to remind people of the critically important work that these folks in police departments, fire departments, EMTs, uh, organizations do for everyday people every single day, 24 hours a day, uh, and the importance of that work to our entire society. Uh, well, Darren, uh, that was I had to put that clip in there about the fire department shortages uh, uh, because, you know, uh, uh, people talk a lot about the defund the police moniker that came about in the summer of 2020. 
Uh, but that has also turned into a defund anybody with a badge almost in a lot of these places. Uh, and the uh, fire department is uh, also experiencing just as bad of staff shortages, equipment shortages, uh, and those kind of things. And I think that's why you guys include them in your mission, is it not? Yeah, we are not a police only organization. We are a first responder organization. The whole first responder community, EMS, fire, police, all that. Right now, the main focus is on the medical equipment for the police vehicles. But if you look at our website, you see Derek Van Orton handing out a bag to a fireman because this volunteer fire department up in the uh, across area didn't have any medical equipment. So we made sure they got their equipment. Man, it's almost unfathomable to think about a fire department that doesn't have medical equipment when it, it, after I've seen the first people on a scene of an incident where critical care is needed immediately are usually the fire department guys and gals. So uh, that's outstanding that uh, you guys are making sure that you're including them. Uh, what do you hear uh, from uh, the, the folks that are receiving this, the, you know, the, the frontline individuals in the police departments and fire departments as you go to these events and everything. Tell us about some of the conversations that, that you have with them. Um, <clears throat> when I was in Wilson County and uh, Judge Whitman's uh, little clip is like uh, 25 seconds is on our website. Just the, the gratitude, the thanks, and really just you're it never ceases to amaze me that they don't have this equipment. They didn't have it going into the donation. Obviously, they have it now. Um, there's a picture of an elderly police officer. He's been on the force for 49 years. Actually, there's a couple in Wilson County that have been around longer than him. And he's got the equipment like this, and he's holding it. And the look on his face is just sheer, just, I mean, you know what? That does it right there. That makes it worth every single bit of effort we have to go through. We're 100% volunteer. And uh, I wouldn't have it any other way. Just gets this equipment to the heroes that need it, and they can save lives using this equipment. But often, thank you. It's like uh, many politicians will tell the chief, you're going to get your equipment in this year's budget. And then they hear the same thing next year and next year and next year never comes. Forget that. We get them the equipment. We get it taken care of. We move on to the next area that needs it. And it saves lives. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, so you mentioned that you get letters from uh, these departments uh, from around the country. Talk folks through the exact process that a department needs to follow to get to you, get the information to you so that they can get into uh, the line, so to speak, uh, as far as getting this equipment? Well, um, the contact portion of our website, if you go there, you fill out, we have to do a contact form. Gone are the days you can put an email address up there because you put an email address, you get all kinds of wonderful things. Um, fill out the contact form, give us an idea where you are, uh, how many uh like say if it were a police department, uh, how many vehicles you have that don't have medical equipment. Um, for example, this is called a Molly. A lot of cars have this, and this is a nice little bag. But if some department wants to get that big bag I showed you earlier, and they already have this something like the Molly here. Now, if they have a $12 Rite Aid first aid kit, that's a different story. We'll take care of that. We'll, we'll get them something nice. But if they have something like this, then we're going to have to pass and get the equipment out to the departments that have basically nothing. Okay. Um, they put down the information in the contact form. They get it to us and we put it aside and we prioritize from there. Uh, we found out about Summerton ourselves. Uh, we did the research on that. We found out Summerton didn't have this equipment. Uh, Wisconsin came to us through other means. And in Wilson County, we knew Stephen Williford down in Wilson County and knew that they didn't have anything. 
but others have reached out to us via email or whatever and told us about the needs they have. There's a certain chief in Arizona right now. His department has nothing, and he's right there by the border, and he said, whatever you can do for us, that would be great, and it just, you know, just go to our contact form. So uh, these these rural departments, uh, you kind of touched on it previously, but uh, uh, remind folks why it's so important, to, especially to have these rural departments, sheriffs, police, fire departments, uh, have this capability in every vehicle. Well, it's like uh, uh, Sheriff Jim Stewart touched on there. In rural counties, uh, budget is a thing. Uh, and uh, Judge Whitman talked about how they're further out from where that ER or hospital is. Like Somerton is 20 miles from the nearest hospital ER, which is in Yuma. Those seconds count. Those moments, all that counts. Uh, put a tourniquet on there, put an occlusive bandage on there, get that thing taken care of, put a chest seal on there. Stabilize that person until that ambulance arrives, because if that ambulance is 15, 20 minutes away and that person's bleeding out really badly, you need that equipment. Just to get it on there, hold that person until those paramedics arrive with that ambulance. That's why it's the most important thing in those areas. You've got to have that stuff to stabilize these people until help could arrive. Uh, if they could have a paramedic in every police vehicle when they go out on their call, that would be great. That's wonderful. But... Like one of the officers said in Wilson County, nah, they have any equipment, they know how to use the equipment. They're trained in advanced first aid. They can put a tourniquet on, a chest seal, something like that. And in those areas, help is further away and time is precious. Oh, absolutely. Uh, the golden hour uh, is very precious. So we got a question over uh, uh, in the audience. Uh, Bill and Caroline, uh, go ahead with the question. Yeah, you're doing you're doing um, great work, and we want to support you in every way we can. We have shared out your uh, Twitter page and your website. Would you be open to doing other spaces? I've done a space with Dan Ball. He is a great guy, but we have some other news folks, and Caroline's networked with the world. So, uh, uh, you know, are you open to doing some other spaces? Yeah, whatever we need to do to get the word out. And to keep the good work going, that's that's you know, we're open to doing whatever we have to. Absolutely. The only tricky part with that is you gotta know how to operate that account on X or Twitter or whatever it's called these days. That <laughs> <laughs> I think yeah, you Dallas, got that under control. <laughs> Dallas, Dallas, she, can, she can take care of that. She she can yeah, she's like yeah, the social media guru. Yeah, well, uh, that expanded your audience uh, dramatically by saying yes to that, Darren, because uh, uh, millions of people are listening to these spaces every single day. And uh, that was Bill, our host uh, today, uh, was asking you that question. And uh, uh, Bill hosts uh, uh, hundreds of these spaces uh, and uh, has quite a reach in and of his own right. Uh, and then other people that come into those spaces reach uh, uh, we'll also expand that. So uh, we'll get there one way or the other, uh, and maybe we can get uh, you know some bigger influencers' attention uh, and get you on their shows for a segment or two. Uh, because I know they, I know they support your mission. You know, talking about Steve Bannon, he's a big supporter of law enforcement and uh, fire department, first responders, and those kind of things. Uh, and uh, maybe we can get it on his radar radar scope and. Uh, get you on the show uh, at some point or one of the shows on RAB at least and see what we can do there. What what are your uh, donors like? Uh, uh, you know, what's your donor population look like as far as the folks that are actually giving money to your organization? Well, the average donor is usually the average person off the street who finds out about what we're doing. Uh, $80, $50, sometimes 100 um, for Wisconsin, we had a $4,000 donor, uh, a major uh, agriculture company in the area, up in the La Crosse area. Uh, I think their name is Potato King. So, um, yeah, yeah, all kinds of people who've given all kinds of uh, money and the uh, 
raffle prizes and stuff we had up in Wisconsin, the raffle tickets and stuff we had at Wilson County. But to get the equipment in in the first place, the average donor can be anywhere from $5 to $100. And that's what we do. We get the equipment to them well before we hold the event. A week, two, three weeks before we hold the event, give them time to take care of that. So we have the bag sitting out there at the event. So when people come, like in the in the Wilson County event, you got all these medical bags just lined up there, and the departments will take care of putting them together, you know, in the way they want. But we got all the equipment in each bag that goes in it. And they're just lined up like soldiers there. And people see that is what you're supporting. That's what you're doing. That's what you're making happen. Uh, absolutely. Absolutely. Well, we've got to take another commercial break to pay for this show. Uh, so uh, we'll come back. And when we come back, we'll hear from uh, uh, Customs and Border Patrol agent Victor Avila, who is a congressional candidate uh, this past uh, term, but also uh, was one of the Border Patrol agents that uh, has been uh, wounded in the line of duty, and he's talking about these kits, and we'll go through the kit with Darren to see exactly what's in there and what you're getting uh, when you make donations to Back the Badge USA at BadgeUSA.com. I'll be right back on Patriot.tv. Uh, darktalk.com, darktalk.com. Now you hit that website that's exclusive to patriot.tv so you're able to also help your family and support our network to keep us going as well. Let's go to, to uh, not only satellite phones, but then you just have regular phones as well, regular mobile phones as well. So you can click satellite phones or you go back to the top, click secure phones. So this gives you various cell phones. We are protecting your privacy in ways that no one else does. <clears throat> We've talked about how your cell phone is a government tracking device, how it archives where you've been, what you're up to, who you're talking with, what you're searching on the web, and that information is not private. It is available to the cell phone companies and often sold or used against people in court, right? With uh, these phones, and, and I'm not trying to say that these are for criminals, these are for people who want the privacy that they are afforded by the Constitution, right? Because we don't think that it's our job to track you it is our job to provide you with communications uh, so you can go about your daily life. We've learned through the pandemic, we can never be caught unprepared again. And so many Americans, when COVID hit, they had nothing in the house. Stores were shut down and, and doctor's offices were shut down. And even if doctors prescribed drugs, hydroxychloroquine, ivermectin, pharmacists wouldn't fill the prescriptions. That was a nightmare. Now the situation is much worse. We have these horrible supply chain problems. In our emergency medical kit at the wellness company, we have eight prescription drugs that are all potentially life-saving. Most people have died with COVID. They died in the hospital because they didn't receive early treatment. Every American family should have one of these. I can tell you the wellness company kit is the answer. Hi, Victor Avila here. I'm a native Texan. I've uh, been living in San Antonio in a Dallas Fort Worth area. And I'm here to talk to you about a bag that is very important is back the badge USA. It's a 501c3 uh, organization that is trying to get these trauma bags uh, and donate at least a hundred of them or close to a hundred of them in Wilson County which is about 30 miles outside of San Antonio, Texas. These are very important uh, medical bags that they want to be able to supply to every police vehicle and they will try and start, they're gonna try and start with Wilson County and then go to as many as possible, even throughout the United States to supply and help our men and women in law enforcement to have this first aid. Now let's take a look at this bag. As great as this bag is with all the necessities for first aid here, including uh, tourniquets and many, many more things, that EMTs have actually seen what's inside of this and really approve of the first state uh, supplies that are in here. 
but this is not just the bag that you will be getting. This bag actually attaches to this bag. And you will be getting the complete bag. I'm gonna donate as many of these bags as I can throughout the entire country, and it's for an incredible cause. A lot of our police departments, especially now, are very short in resources, especially with a spike in crime. So this is an incredible opportunity for you to, to back them, to help them financially, so these bags can be donated to every police unit in the country. Let's make that happen. Thank you. Welcome back to the Rob Mana Show. It's Training Tuesday, and we're talking with the creator, founder, and leader of Back to Badge USA that uh, Mr. Avila was talking about right there and showing you the two bags that go along together that Back to Badge USA don't raise his funds to donate to law enforcement and fire department uh, first responders so that they have this in the vehicle. And uh, Darren Perrin is that leader. Uh, and, uh, uh, sir, you're doing God's work. Uh, let's let's give folks uh, uh, a view into those exact bags now that we know what the kit looks like with the red bag, the trauma kit on the outside attached to the green bag. Uh, what's in both of those bags and why is it so important that these first responders have it in their hands when they get to an incident? First of all, the uh, green bag has some more routine things, routine medical things for like uh, if you have a cut or something like that. When we're talking about the life-saving trauma components that are in both bags, uh, first of all, you'd have your combat gauze. This is a four by four. Uh, we have four of these in there and we have four of the three by 24 Z fold. You're familiar with those, Colonel. And we have four of these, two in the trauma bag of each two in the main bag of each. This is a cat tourniquet, combat application tourniquet. It's what the Navy corpsmen follow the Marines in the battle. They have several of these, the corpsmen do. And we have these vented occlusive seals. They come in pairs. I separated these two. Uh, these occlusive seals are if you got a chest wound or a wound anywhere, especially if it's two-sided. So it's called a sucking wound when it's two-sided. Put it on. Put it on the other side, seal it up. Now, this bandage here is a four inch pressure bandage. Uh, this is important. It can go on the arm, leg, go around the chest, whatever. It's a pressure bandage. It seals off that uh, bleeding, etc. Now, new to the bags is this bleed stop. Bleed Stop made a donation of several of the big 60 gram packs and some 20 gram packs. And we put these in the bags. That's new to Texas. It's a brand new thing that they got. So those are the life saving trauma components that are in there. And there's a few other things as well. But we wanted to get this in their hands so they knew okay, they look at what's going on. They see that bleed. Is it something for a quick clot? Is it something for the cat tourniquet or the pressure bandage? They have all that stuff at their disposal right there so they can take care of the situation. If you have a Columbine type of situation happen and you have paramedics quite a ways out and you have an officer right there with one of these bags, they can take care of that. We even had Lavernia Independent School District in Wilson County all seven of their bags went to those cars and I was speaking to the chief of Lavernia ISD. I said, hey chief, if you want to tear one of these off and put it in the officer's resource office, that way they got something here, something there. There's no telling when your car will be parked on the other side of campus and you need it here. And great people and just give them the tools they need. Oh yeah, and that stuff that equipment right there, uh, those capabilities are crucial to saving lives. I can attest to it on the battlefields of Afghanistan and Iraq. Uh, from an American perspective, the reason why we have so few uh, fatalities uh, is because our troops have access to first aid equipment like that, and it saves their lives uh, at a time where in the, like the days of Vietnam, they would have passed away before they could even uh, get on the helicopters to get back to an aid station or to a hospital. Uh, so it's very critical 
uh, that uh, these guys and gals have this capability. Well, we've got one more hand up in the audience. I want to take that question before we get to the end of the show. Uh, we got a couple minutes here to answer it. Uh, go ahead, Bill. Who's got their hand up over there in the X Spaces audience? We got Low Country. Go ahead, ask your question. Oh, I, I was looking for something that um, was sent to that. Let me just find it. It's about Turkey. Hold on, I got it right here. One second, y'all. Oh, sorry. Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, so, just in Hamas plan to establish a secret base low, in low country yeah i'm sorry we got to stay on topic we're on a live tv show um so uh, i'm just going to go back to you colonel okay sorry. thanks for the question uh apologize for that folks uh we do try to stay on topic on on my show spaces uh, uh so that we can stay focused on the task at hand and in this case it's back to badge uh usa we are talking with the uh founder and leader of Back to Bad USA about the uh, capabilities that they bring to bear, uh, that they donate to especially the small and rural uh, police departments and fire departments so that they have these life-saving materials uh, in their possession when they show up at an incident. I mean, there's nothing like, Darren, showing up at an incident when you're the first responder, you may be by yourself, and you have three or four badly wounded individuals that you know you could save your their lives if you have the right gear with you uh, that you're already trained to use, isn't it? You know, one of our people at our event uh, is a supporter of ours. He may be a board member in the future. Uh, Mark is a uh, retired LA County Sheriff's deputy. And uh, all of that, and I'm not taking a shot at that, that that department, that's what I'm saying. They each have a belt tourniquet. Okay, that's all they got though. Uh, it's, it's California. But when you look at December of 2020, when that LA Sheriff's uh, SUV, the guy ran up and just fired shots in and ran off, that lady got out, that lady deputy got out. She used her tourniquet to save her partner's life. So that one belt tourniquet there saved the life. And even if you just got one belt tourniquet, even if you just got whatever, that saves lives. And when you have that equipment, there's no feeling like being able to intervene and take care of that situation. That's what they told me. And I believe it 100 percent because uh, when it's the opposite, uh, you don't want to have that feeling. Um, there was an incident that I saw a lady fall and hit her head and the side of her head was gushing out blood. I happen to have that exact bag right there in my vehicle. I stopped and had the bag out in front of me and I'm waiting for my Red Cross training and Colonel Ecolapidus, if you want, I'm waiting for it to kick in, kick in. They said it would kick in. I'm like, all right, come on, kick in training. And I'm undoing the buckles and right behind me, this lady walks up and says, I'm a nurse. And I slid the bag over to her and she yeah. held the lady's head up and you know, kept, kept the bleeding down because a head wound can go bad fast. Because it was right here in Ventura County, in Camarillo. Paramedics were there in about seven minutes. They did their job. But me and the nurse, we walked away, and I just told her thanks for that. I appreciate that. But the, you know what? The feeling of being there and just having that thing there for you that helps somebody is is priceless. It sure is, Darren. Well, thank you so much for spending an hour with us. Keep me in the loop on Tupelo. Uh, uh, and folks, uh, if you want to uh, get this stuff for your department, send Darren uh, a uh, contact form on the website. It's badgeusa.com, right, Darren? Uh, and uh, you can follow him on Twitter, X, at badgeusa. Do that. And Darren will get you linked up with our host here on the spaces today, get you into some spaces uh, and maybe we'll get you on uh, somebody like Steve Bannon's radar and he can start having you on uh, that war room show every once in a while. Go ahead. Final thoughts. That would be great. But the final thoughts uh, are the first and most important thing. It's about our heroes in blue, supporting them in whatever way we can. And uh, if it wasn't for others like our co-founder, Dennis Gillette and Dallas Benson and so many others on the board that work so hard they make this happen. You know, it's like uh, 
that they're the ones who work so hard. I want to give them credit and thank them for everything they do. Kyle, Jeff, all the others, they believe in what we're doing. And uh, it's powerful when you got a good team and you got a good group of people. And thank you, Colonel. Thank you to Brandon House and to General Flynn and everybody. God bless y'all. Well, God bless you, sir. Uh, Darren Parent of Back to Badge USA. Critical gear for critically funded police and fire departments and EMTs. Go help them out, folks, at badgeusa.com. Well, tomorrow's Whistleblower Wednesday, and I've got uh, uh, Colonel Tower and Towner Watson, a retired Air Force colonel, uh, to talk about a subject that I've been curious about, Operation Gladio, what it is, what it isn't, uh, and why we should know about it. Should be an interesting show. I'll see you then at Patriot.tv on The Rob Mana Show.